Hello and good morning, good evening, sorry. Um, we want to just give God thanks for this opportunity to be here once again um, where we can um, trust God for what he is doing in our life. We can trust God for his mercies, trust God for the day that we have, just trust God for health and strength. And you know, that might be hard for you to, to, to grapple with. That might be hard for you to, um, to acknowledge when maybe you're not good in health and maybe you are not strong today. Uh, maybe stuff is going on in your life. Maybe, um, I don't know, you, maybe it's not a good day for you. But in spite of all of the things that's going on, we are, we are encouraged to praise God and to trust him and to give him all the glory. We are um, encouraged to, to really ask God to be the center of our life, the center of everything that we do. Why? Because he knows the end from the beginning. And he knows that even though it may be hard for you, and even though you may find yourself at the 12 o'clock midnight, that 12 o'clock signifies the breaking of a new day. And so it may be the darkest point of your life. It may be the hardest part of your life or even the season. But we should always give God praise because we know that he won't give us one more than we can bear. And two, he will not leave us nor forsake us. So wherever you find yourself today, whether it's hard to praise God for health and strength because you're struggling with your health, praise him because right now the darkest point of your night is the breaking of a new day. And so we just believe in God that even this evening as we um, fellowship together, as we pray together, there will be things that shift in the atmosphere. There will be things that shift in your life and in my life and in our city and our nation. Um, and there will be things that shift around um, our family and so forth and so forth. Because God is a great and faithful God. And so I really want to thank you for journeying with us. I really want to thank you for continuing to, to log on each week whether you're logging on on a Friday, whether you log on on Sunday, um, or you're, you're, you're logging on um, in the week on demand and replaying this. Whether, however you stumble across this, we thank you for being with us, being faithful. This has been a massive learning curve for us, a um, huge learning curve, and we're still learning. I was on the phone to some technicians and different people, and, and I was just confessing, listen, I did not come into this uh, lockdown with any of this on my mind. I was completely west from all this. But it's been thrown at us and we've had to deal with it. And you know what? I really believe this was this is part, not the COVID-19, but I, I really believe pushing the church online was definitely God's opportunity to get the gospel out. Um, we, are, we are grateful that there are people that watch us from China and, and from various other places around the world. And, and we are grateful to God. And we just thank him that our voice is being heard in lives that, that are turning around and lives that are desperate for Jesus. Before I go on any, any further, um, I just want to um, really congratulate you, those who have subscribed, those who are liking our broadcast each time. And if you haven't liked it, Please like um, and keep on liking. Um, one of the benefits that's happened with the subscription that you, many of you have, have um, clicked on and, and you've now subscribed to our channel, we now have the same link for every one of our broadcasts. So once you, want, if, you, if, you, if you just come on because you've, you've subscribed, then you're going to get all the notifications. But if you're part of, of the church and you've got the link, then it's going to be the same link now for all of our broadcasts. And um, so our Friday and our Sunday 
service, once you have that link, it's going to be the same link. Um, so if you were sent the text um, via WhatsApp today, use that link each time you know we're going to go live and you will find us on our broadcast. So it's really important that you subscribe and keep on subscribing because there are many benefits for us and because of the algorithms of YouTube, it gets us even further. And who would have known that the Far East would be watching and listening to us? Who would have known that in in, in Scotland and in the North Sea, um, in south, south of the country and all over are, are listening to us? Who would have known? But because you are doing these things, because you're liking, subscribing, you're commenting, our broadcasts are meeting the needs of many people. So congratulate you and obviously those, the team that is around us. Okay, with all of that now, let's get into some prayer. Um, we are going to journey with you today. Um, and as you notice, over the past couple of weeks, we've been dealing with the gates um, the gates that were rebuilt and put into order, um, especially in Nehemiah's time. Um, these gates existed before ne Nehemiah, but we see a great picture of the gates in Nehemiah's, um, the book of Nehemiah, and in his, his, his mission to rebuild the wall. The gates are significant. Even on your personal body, there are gates. There are the ear gates, the eye gates, and the mouth gate, nose. Your pores are gates. Um, and so many gates that we have, and, and so many ways that the, the, we are bombarded, we are, um, things are coming into our, 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 our being and into our mind by the gates. And you really have to guard the gate. The Bible talks about in Proverbs that the woman and um, the virtuous woman enables her household to work in a way that her husband will be able to sit at the right place in the gate. Gates to be an official. Um, it's so important. Gates are really important. The Bible says, um, um, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. The gates of the temple um, of special Moses had the colors of the triune God and the victory of the cross all intertwined, the blood and um, the divinity, the royalty, all of that, the, his righteousness intertwined with colors in the gates. And that was what you walked in to have an encounter with God. Gates are important. So today we're going to look at the old gate. Um, before we even start, I want to offer this time to the Lord so that our time will be effective. Um, and we are going to also silence every distraction so that we can be focused and we can be engaged. So will you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you that, Lord, you have given us authority here on the earth to execute your divine will. Father, and so right now, as we join together in prayer, and as we join together, Father, in, in um, our mission to reopen and reestablish the gates, Father, we are praying that every distraction will be, Lord God, brought low. We're praying, Father, right now that every satanic plan, every weapon forged, Lord, will backfire on the enemy this evening. Father, we're declaring that our mouths will be like a trumpet in the atmosphere, that it will make a sound that will bring walls down, Lord God, that have been created to block us from our purpose but today father we declare victory in the atmosphere we declare victory in the heavens we declare victory here on the earth we declaring that as a church not just local but as a church the body of Christ we will advance we will take territories for you father we bless you we adore you father we declare let there be a wall of fire around us and let your glory be in its midst Father, we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' precious name. And I'm going to hand over now to Minister Monica as she takes us forward with the gates. Minister Monica. Good evening and welcome everyone to our Friday evening prayer. As you know, we have been journeying through Nehemiah 3 with the gates. And this evening we are looking at the, the old gate. And that is in Nehemiah 3 
and verse 6. And it reads, Moreover, Jehoiada the son of Pasea and Meshulam the son of Besodea repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors and its bolts and its bars. Now the old gate was situated in the northern wall of the city. It was either from the, the old gate of, of the olden time or it was of the old wall. The gateway and gate houses were, was also repaired first with its beams and put into place ready for these gates to be hung later on. You know, there was one of the writers who said that trusting in God for new things is absolutely relevant and imperative. But we must also remember that the old things, the foundation things, are also well and well really needed. You see, the bolts and the bars, every single bit of those gates were relevant. It just reminds me that like ourselves to the Lord, we are valuable and we are relevant in such a time as this. You see, I look at us as screws in the big cog wheel of God and every screw is of value and very, very important. We are to guard the gates of our lives. We are to guard the gates against every plan of the enemy. The old gate also reminds us that the word of God never changes. And when we read in Psalms 119 and verse 89, it says, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And so as the Lord's word is settled in heaven, so it is settled in the earth. And we must also always seek after the truth of God's word. When we know the truth, as the scripture tells us, the truth will set us free. Free to live, free to worship, and free to praise God. The old gate represents also discipleship and it represents growth. It represents maturity and our daily walk in our daily walk with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we live his word, as we act out his word, James tells us that we should not be hearers alone, but we should be doers of the word. So as we do the word of God, and as we act them out in our lives, it will help us to mature and grow in grace as the Lord calls us to grow and mature. The old gate brings us into places where we must learn that old ways, we don't just throw out the old ways. Old ways are relevant and they are important. When we look at the elders, we can learn many, many things from the elders. We must never leave our elders behind. We will always, we must always seek the wisdom of the elders. In the book of Joshua, it talks about the city of refuge. You know, when those cities were being built, the city that when anybody did anything wrong, those cities that they ran to, the first place they ran was to the old gates before they were allowed to enter into the city. The old gate was also where Boaz went to redeem Ruth as the kinsman redeemer, if you remember that story. So the old gate is important. The old things are not things just to throw away, but that we can build on them because they are relevant in our journey. The Lord said to me when I was looking about the old gate, he says, Monica, what do you actually see when you, when you look at the old gate? And I look at some of my elder peers, the peers, the people that I met when I first came into the organization or when I first accepted the Lord as my personal savior and Lord. Those people even up to today, I can say my friends, those people even up to today, they are teaching me. They are still 
um, coaching me. They are still urging me. They are still encouraging me. So I could never, never forget those old wisdom. I could never forget those old ways that I was taught because they have been my foundation up to now. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I come boldly to the throne of grace, Lord, all the gates of our lives, I bring them before you this evening. Some of them we have been very complacent about, Father, and I pray for your forgiveness. I pray this evening, Lord, that you will help us to tighten up those gates, hallelujah, that are just just being left there, just being left there to do nothing at all. Father God, I just want to pray that you will help us to tighten up those gates, Father. Because the enemy, hallelujah, as a roaring lion, seek to move into any one of those gates that we give him the opportunity to do. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, as he has no part in us, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us to tighten up on our gates. Help us to seek the truth, hallelujah, and to hold fast to the truth. Help us to seek wisdom, hallelujah, because you said you will give us wisdom who we'll ask you liberally, Father God. So in the name of Jesus, as I come this evening, Father, I pray for your guidance, Lord Jesus. I pray for your guidance, Holy Spirit. I pray that you will help the elders, oh Lord, hallelujah, to be a part of the journey that we are on so that we can all move together to tighten up the gates, oh hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Father God, help us, God, to be committed. Help us to be committed. Help us, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, to stand firm for what we believe in. And as we hold on to the Holy Spirit, as we hold on to your words, Lord, hallelujah, we will give no place to the enemy. Help us, Father God, hallelujah, to know your truth. Help us, Father, because the truth will set us free. The truth is our foundation, hallelujah. We will never change. We can never change your truth. Because your words are already, hallelujah, in heaven and in earth. It's already, hallelujah, uh, settled. Help us, Father, as we walk, as we walk with you day by day, that we, Lord, hallelujah, will seek your kingdom first. Because you said when we seek your kingdom first, you will add all things unto us. Help us to grow and mature in you, Jesus. Help us to walk like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this world of turmoil, God, hallelujah, we seek your grace and we seek your favor. We tell you thanks, Lord, for being our father in heaven and for being the one that stick it closer than a brother. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. As I turn over the, right now to Reverend Tony, in Jesus' name, amen. A warm welcome and good evening to you all. Just want to give God all the glory and the praise for this day that he's made and allowing for us to be here. And I appreciate the fact that as Pastor opened up and saying that some of us may not really, really deep down in our spirit understand the fact that God is good because there are outward environmental things that sway our emotions, sway our feelings, affect our senses, and we become sometimes frustrated. But let me be assure you today that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who we call upon, he's in control and he does all things well. As has been mentioned, we're on a journey and we're talking about the gates. There are so much significance in the gates in terms of the, the, the gates in the temple of the book of Nehemiah. And there's a healthy, healthy revelation with this as we go along um, in our journey. And if anybody looks at the formation of the gates, we started with, with the sheep gate last week was the fish gate. This week we were on the old gate and so on. And there are actually 12 gates. And each of these purpose for us to understand that this is part of the journey as we become a Christian, as we develop, as we walk and that journey and the actual shape of the gate in terms of how it's designed. And again, it goes anti-clockwise as opposed to clockwise. 
shows us clearly it's designed in the shape of a leg and it's not by accident or coincidence it's talk about the journey we're actually journeying along as we're walking in our christian walk so as sister monica mentioned the pastor mentioned the old gate reminds us of the word of god that never changes and that we're to seek after the truth of god's word the old gate represent discipleship growth and maturity in our walk with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now this is significant in the fact, and I just want you to put a pin in something, that Pastor mentioned there are gates, gates in terms of what is even on our body, eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. But I would say to you, and want you to think about this before I pray, a gate is designed for things to go in and for things to go out. There's a two-way process in terms of the gate. And even in looking at the truth of the word of God, if you allow for the truth, the truth, the foundational basic truth of the word of God to go into you, what comes out of you transforms you. So going back to those people that are feeling the pressures, feeling the anxieties, feeling the stresses, feeling the challenges of life, allow the word of God to go in to you and allow it to not just go into your head go into your mind but allow you to because that's good to study the word it's good to to read the word but it's more important as joshua said to meditate on the word because when you meditate you marry you know when you you're cooking and you you marinate something and you season it overnight there's a difference in taste when something's being seasoned there's something when there's a difference when you can feel the potency of something that you've you've stored for a period of time and it's aged, even fermented wine when it's stored. Do you know when even a bottle of I say champagne, the, the older it is, the more valuable it becomes in terms of vintage. The word of God, the more it marinates within your spirit, the more powerful you are to be able to stand against all of the new thought patterns and all of the new ascribes um, my, my mindsets and thought patterns that people will try and influence you because the power of the word of God going in will allow for you to stand and we're here to pray with you and to pray for you and pastor will remind you and we're reminded that if you have any prayer requests to start to to populate and to make that known to us because we will pray for you as well it's not just about we're just on here just to just to pray out we're praying with targeting for specific needs and again we know that god is able to rescue deliver revitalize replenish heal and make a way so we're going to look at these things properly and as we go for it and i'm praying because again sometimes even when i've been studying and I write on the piece of paper because that paper, when I store it and put it away, it's not like a laptop or like a tablet or like a phone at time. It can become corrupted. Sometimes you're around people, around situations that can corrupt the data that goes in. But when you write it, and that's what God does. Because even when Moses went up to Sinai and he came down, he had the tablets. The tablets was written on something that could be destroyed. But the Lord says this to you today that allow for his word to go in, the truth of his word to go in and write it on the tablets of your heart. You see, when it reaches that place, it's not just a head knowledge, it's transformational. And I'm saying to you today, I'm believing that God is going to do something so profound in your life if you allow for his word, because again, it's so powerful. And as we're covering this and as we're going in and as we're starting to address it, as we're starting to, to crank it up in terms of the movement and we're getting momentum, I want you to stay with us on this journey because you will benefit, you will be blessed and the atmosphere will be changed. So Father, in the name of Jesus, as I come to you right now, I thank you for this opportunity to be on your program. Me, a humble servant that will come before you knowing that in myself, I am nothing. But because the truth of your word marinated in my spirit, you gave me access from the outer court, inner courts to the holies of holies. I give you thanks and praise, holy God, that I can lift up your name. And as I pray right now, dear Father, that the frequency 
of your word will hit their father the hearts of individuals and it will make a change it will be transformational father i'm believing and trusting that you shall move their father that your truth their father that is stand stood the test of time my god their father that has stood the test of time and will stand their father even for the future their father that word that is unremovable is unshakable as the god who spoke it father i pray right now that your people their father today they will go back to feed upon your word and allow for it to to marinate within their spirit the truth this gate this old gate the old gate as i i, I there's a there's a, a performing artist called Dennis McLean that says seek for the old path my god yes lord let us come back to that place there father because even we have a book that's dedicated in the book of titus that talks about mentoring fathering mentoring mothering it talks about the elders governing maturing the, the, the young people that are coming in, those that are coming in, those that need help, that need guidance. As Sister Monica said that I can say that there were times I was going to fasting and prayer on a Wednesday and there were the elders around me and they were coaching me and helping me to develop. And, and you know, when you see a pinball wizard that knocks the balls left and right and that ball will have to come through that right channel, they enable you. It's the same thing that there are times that you bounce from left to right, but the Lord God Almighty through his wisdom will allow you to come through the channel and i speak right now and decree and declare that those that are listening to things that were trying to take them off track the holy spirit will bring you back into order i speak and declare that those who have been reading articles that are not necessarily conducive to their destiny i speak that they shall seek for the old gate they will get back on the path i speak in the name of jesus that they will seek after the king of kings the lord of lords the God, the God who says, I am the author and the finish of your faith. Yes, we have a God who is a director. He's a script writer. He's the one who is able to edit. My God, holy God is able to edit things and erase things out of your life and put you in the truck and to fill the gaps i speak that as your people oh my god come back to the place where they look for truth the truth not just truth that is temporal i'm talking lasting truth there was one time where i had a lot of hair on my head that was true at the time but subjective to time I, hair doesn't grow as long as it would as it did the color of my hair has changed there were grays in my hair now that was true for one time it was all jet black but now there are grays the reality is that god never changes his infallible word is undisputable delectable word it's so palatable i'm praying that your people oh god will understand that your word is truth and it's truth that was liberated it's truth that was enable you to be able to walk on a path that will keep you on the straight and narrow it's truth that will release the act addictive people that are addicted to things that they think that will stabilize them crutches that they've been using throughout life i pray in the name of jesus my god that they seek for the truth the truth that is liberating it's so liberating it sets you free from your past it sets you free from bondage like lazarus when the truth came jesus spoke and says lazarus come out of the grave he brought him from a place and this truth brought him for a place of death my God, I'm speaking to somebody right now who feels in a place of depression, anxiety, who sees even in this lockdown because they've not gone out into the air, fresh air, and felt fresh air. They've not been able to, to function in the way that they've, and they felt more locked in than they've ever been, even than the people that are locked in prisons. I speak that the truth shall liberate them and they will feel the breath of fresh air. They shall inhale and exhale. As I said before, the gates are doorways that come, come in and out. I'm speaking, there is liberation that you come out of the place that you've been locked in. Father, I come to you and I thank you and bless you that you're doing a new thing. You're enabling your people to know that they are being liberated, set free, 
and they are in a place where bondage is broken. Fathers, I come to you, I thank you and I bless you. I lift up your holy name. I'm praying and believing that somebody gets a touch. And I'm not just speaking one person. There is a liberating move. There's a change in atmosphere right now. Do you know that even when the sun is shining, clouds can block it. It cannot feel the temperature that they may have forecasted. But I forecast over your life today that the sun is shining and it will break through. It will eliminate all of the dark areas of your life because our God is good. Do you know this? Listen to what I've got to say, my brethren, that when the sun comes, in the sun time, springtime, do you know that dust, when you see dust because the light is shining, the Lord God Almighty is saying that I will illuminate where there is dust and darkness in your life because you've seek for the truth. You've seek for the old gate and I will illuminate and I will clean. It's gone better than Mr. Sheen. He will illuminate and it will be shiny. It will reflect him. My God, somebody needs to receive this today. I'm praying and believing that our God is able. He's able to cause for that shine. It glistens. My God, it's like a mirror. When it holds it up, it reflects the light. Like we are people that reflect the light because the truth is in us and it liberates when people look into it they can see who they are oh god it's not like when you go to the fairground and you have distorted mirrors and when you see you look fat or you look thin or you look out of shape no the truth of the living god causes for you to see the image of the living christ that shines through father god almighty i'm calling that your people they see who you are they see who they are because they've looked into the living living word and that living word is liberating ah god almighty we're on a move right now we're on a journey right now and i'm praying and thanking you god that as i hand over to pastor lloyd that we will get this there will be a revelation and a transformation in your life as i come to you in the precious and mighty name of the king of kings and the lord of lords amen and amen amen and so we we continue in this vein and according to um, the book of Revelations, chapter 19 and verse 13, it says, He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So, Father, right now, we are contending for the Word of God. We are contending. The old gate talks about the Word being established. Father, we declare right now in our life a, re a revival for the Word, a revival, Father, an appetite for the Word of God. Where, Lord God, we have deviated, where we have, Lord God, misquoted, where we have misrepresented your Word, we're praying right now for a, a, a coming back, a return back to the word of God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. The Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse um, 11, it says, thy word have I hid in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, that I may not sin against you. Father, we bless you that your word is not just on paper, but your word is in us. And so therefore, Father God, we come in alignment with the word inside us. We declare, let heaven meet earth in us, Father, by the sovereignty of your word. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. And even there, Lord God, where there is sickness in our body, let your word begin to judge the sickness. Where there is depression, in the mind. Let your word bring forth light. The entrance of your word bring forth light, Lord. Light. Light up the mind. Light up the emotions, Father. In the name of Jesus, where there is heaviness, let there be a lifting, Father. Oh God, we, we pray. Where there is um, disillusion, where there is um, 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 confusion and people are lost in their word, disorientated. That's the word I was looking for. We declare according to Psalms 119 verse 105 that thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Father, in the name of Jesus, that thy word, your word, your word, your word is bringing the compass back to our life. Bring the compass back to our church. Bring the compass back to our family. In the name of Jesus, bring the compass back to our, our nation and our city. While we are in lockdown, Father, while there is not enough 
in information um, circulating where there's too much Lord noise Lord about what's going on but we're declaring let the word bring forth truth let the word bring forth light light up our life light up our way father we're praying right now for our governments father and our counselors and those who are making decisions over us Lord God right now in the name of Jesus let the word of God be in their mouth Lord God even let, let, let it be like Balaam when they came to speak Lord something on, uh, uh, um, on um, contrary to what you wanted to do let them begin to prophesy according to your will father in the name of Jesus we pray that in the government in the council in the official um, leadership of our nations and cities father let somebody rise up let people rise up who reverence and hold on to your word we're praying father because it's only by your word that we can know where we are and where we are meant to go so father we're praying we're praying right now come on church i want you to help me pray i want you to help me pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there is a famine for the word of God. There is a there is a, a, a deviation from the word of God. Ah, the, you know, some people think because I'm a young pastor, I'm coming up with all kinds of different crazy ideas and I want to do all kinds of crazy activities. But you know, those who are part of the church, I'm not deviating from the word of God. The word of God has to be our firm foundation. You can, you can do whatever you want to do you can say whatever you want to say you can go to a mcdonald's church you can do whatever the case may be but here here in our church we're going to build our life upon his word upon his word and so father god because we are also gatekeepers in our city we're declaring over the city of manchester and whatever city you are in while you're watching this we're declaring that the foundations of our cities will return back to the word we will return back to the word of God in our schools let it return back to the word of God we're not just asking for prayer prayer is great but let there be a return into the word let the word of God come back into our assemblies let the word of God come back in to devotion time in the school in the name of Jesus we're declaring over our families though that are returning back to the word there are so many different elite uh, spiritually illegal spiritual off key and um, structures that are in our families but Lord we declaring let there be a returning to the word of God the word of God the word of God is our very foundation the word of God father is what we need father we're declaring where there are crooked ways let them become straight where there are father different ideologies let them be lord god scattered abroad father because the bible says your word is established forever lord you foil the plans of man but lord your ways your word your will will stand firm forever in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on church come on church come on church i need you to press in with us I need you to press him. If, if there's ever a time that we need to pray for the old gate, the old gate, the returning back to not, not tradition, not to things that Lord, are dead and gone. But I'm telling you the sovereignty of the word of God, it is now. It is now while there are all manners of doctrine, where there are all manners of, 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 of people saying this, that and the other. We have gone so far away from the word, but we're praying God, let there be a revival of the word of God. Hallelujah. If you believe what we're saying to be true, I want you to write hallelujah. I want you to write amen. You know, when the word amen means, let it be so. Let it be so. Do you believe that this should be so? Do you believe that this should be so? Come on, let me see it. Amen. Let me see your amens. Let me see your amens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. The Bible says, Lord God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Father, we want to return back to the beginning, Lord God, back to the foundational structures of our cities, nations, and the church. Hallelujah. And First Peter 1, verse 25 says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which was preached to you. 
For many of us who have been in, in the church for many a years, you was um, you heard the word of God and it was preached to you. And I'm telling you, the word, as long as you heard it purely, is not changed. God is not changing his mind. You know, there's no such thing as, as mankind changing the mind. I know people say that Moses did, but he did not change the mind of God because the mind of God cannot be changed. What Moses did, he intercepted the the. the the um, rebelliousness of the nation and and tapped into God's original mindset for the for that nation. It's what we call intercession, and this is what we're going to be doing today. We're interceding where there is rebellion, where there is a blockage, where the wrath of God is ready to be poured out. We are interceding and say, God, remember your purpose. For nations, remember your purpose for our marriages, remember your purpose for Manchester, for England, for the United States, for whatever country you're coming from. Remember your purpose, Father. Lord, release your mercy right now, Father. We're asking. So we're not changing his mind, we're just standing in the middle and we're reminding the, 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 the Father of his original purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want this, this is a good opportunity for us now to begin to repent on behalf of our city, on behalf of our nation. You know, Manchester is one of the gateways to homosexuality. Um, it's one of the gateways. We even have a village for it. And, that, and I'm not here to, to condemn or anything like that. But I'm here to tell you we need to return back to the word of God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we repent on behalf of our city, where our city has become gateways to ungodliness, where our city has become the that, um, has paved the way to ungodliness, Father. We are repenting, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. We are repenting, and we are repenting not just because, Father, we are saying it's them, but we, Lord God, have sinned. We have dropped our standards. Lord Father, many people who are walking and living in ungodliness have come from our church maybe come from our families maybe come from our tables maybe wherever they've come from lord father wherever they were brought up but we repent on behalf of our city and on behalf of our nation we're asking you god father to forgive our nation to forgive our cities to forgive our leaders lord forgive our pastors lord who have misquoted our your word who have uh, who have settled for, for tickling the ears of people rather than preaching the word of God. Father, they wanted to build an empire rather than speaking truth. Father, will you forgive us? They've sided, Lord God, with ungodliness, God, for the sake of ratings. But Father, we're praying for forgiveness right now. We're praying that you will sanctify us. We're praying that you will turn us back to your word, to your word, your word, your word, your word. We're hiding back your word in our hearts. Hearts. We're hiding your word in our hearts that we will not sin against you anymore, Father. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying in the name of Jesus. I feel the Holy Spirit in this. Come on, let's push a little bit more. Push a little bit more. Push a little bit more. We are praying, Father God, for a move of God. Father, in me, in me, where I have uh, had a drought in, 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 in these seasons, where I've been burnt out in this season, Lord, and the word of God has not been richly been dwelling in me for whatever reason. Maybe that re represents with you. But Father, Lord, let there be a download. Let there be an, a new appetite. You said those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be filled. Father, turn on the hunger in me. Turn on the hunger in me. Turn on the new appetite in me. Turn, come on, you can pray this as well. Let them be more hunger. Oh my goodness, out of my belly, let there be, like, like Jeremiah said, it shut up in me, Father, that I cannot even keep it quiet. I got to get it out, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You know that there is, I feel as I'm praying, there's an antichrist spirit that we've allowed to, to come amongst us in the church. There's an antichrist spirit, and whenever there's an antichrist spirit, there is a there is a 
a, um, a dulling down, a weakening of the word of God. Because remember, Christ is the word. Jesus is the word. And so when there is an antichrist, there is an anti-word movement. But we break that spirit in the name of Jesus. We derail that spirit in the name of Jesus. We silence that spirit in the name of Jesus. We command by fire, that the fire of the Lord. The Bible says his word is like, is like a fire. His word is like a hammer. Father, in the name of Jesus, where that spirit has been, Lord, weakening and diluting our appetite for your word. We release fire this evening, Lord, against the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, the enemy may have come to us one way, but he's going to be scattered seven ways today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We release the fire of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And we're praying now for true discipleship. True disciples, true disciples, true, true disciples. Come on, help me pray this now. We want, you know, we used to say in the old, 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 back in the day that people were sweetly saved <laughs> that's when you know that they got saved and they really turned away from living in ungodliness we want that saying to come back again that people can be sweetly saved that they become can have a desire to become a follower not of the church but a follower of Christ where they can deny all and pick up their cross and follow him come on now we want leaders who will deny all and follow Follow him. We want leaders who can say, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow the word. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Williams. Yes, um, ride on into our city, mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Press in now with me. Press in with me. Father, we create the atmosphere for true disciples. We create the atmosphere for truth. Through true um, Bereans, Lord God, the spirit of the Bereans, where they will not just take what we say, but they will go back into your word and they will study your word to make sure that what we are saying matches up with your word. Father, we're praying for hungry disciples, Lord God, in your church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we will build our life upon your word. We will build our marriages upon your word. We will build our careers upon your word. We will build, rebuild this city upon your word. Upon your, word, upon your word, upon your word, upon your word, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to pass back now to Minister Monica as she continues this um, this theme on returning back to the word. Of, uh, and, and we just pray that you will just keep on pushing with us. Come on, Sister Hallelujah. Monica. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 6. And verse 16, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old path where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. Then you will find rest for your souls. <laughs> but they said, we will not walk in it. Oh, Father God, forgive us, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us to go back to the old gate because the old gate brings us where, oh God, where we learn the old ways of truth. Oh God, in the old gates and the old city, in the ancient times, the elders would meet and discuss community matters and issue judgments and, dis and disputes. Oh God, we have turned from the old ways. Forgive us, Father God, for watering down and try to water down your word. Hallelujah. But you said in your word, Lord, that your word is quick. Your word is sharp, oh God. Hallelujah. Father God, hallelujah. That any two-edged sword, oh Lord, your word can build up. Your word can break down. So help us in the name of Jesus to stand on your word. Help us to live your word. Help us to eat your word. Help us to sleep your word. Help us to drink your word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the light of your word shine bright in our hearts, Lord, that it will overflow into our communities in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shine the light of your word. Oh, hallelujah, in our hearts that we may see and know, hallelujah, that you are the one through God and through us, Lord, people will come to know you as your personal Savior and Lord. Father God, because you said the Lord will keep anyone, hallelujah, in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed upon him. Let our minds be stayed upon you, Jesus, because you are the word. You are the word of life. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So tell me who does not want life in the name of Jesus. Help us to return to your word. Help us to return to the foundation of your word, Lord. Hallelujah. And as your people, your children that have come through the sheep gate, and we have experienced the reaching out of your love and your grace and favor towards us from the fish gate. We pray, hallelujah, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit to help us in our life journey and walk, help us to walk worthy of your call. As we stop at the old gate, hallelujah, and we align ourselves as we set ourselves again, hallelujah, for the battle. We set ourselves again, Father God, against every plan of the enemy. So this evening, Lord, help us to, to, to stand on your words because your words are the firm foundation that we need. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us, Father God, where we have swayed. Help us where we have got complacent. Help us stir up that fire in us again, Father God. Hallelujah. Because the word is life unto our soul. So, Father God, as we give you thanks, we give you praise, hallelujah. And we tell you thanks for being our Father in heaven and for giving us this opportunity, oh Lord, hallelujah. Where we, Father God, can represent you, oh Lord. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Let the word dwell in us, oh hallelujah. A sweet, hallelujah, sweet savor, Father God. Let your word dwell in us, oh God, hallelujah, that we, Lord, can reach out to others. Oh, Father God, there's so many, there is so many people, Lord, some are depressed. Oh, Lord Jesus, some are tired, some are weary. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that your word will touch every heart this evening, that your word will touch every spirit. Oh, Father God, because your word, oh God, will uplift us. Oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So this evening, hallelujah, oh God, we give you thanks and we give you praise that you have given us the opportunity, Lord where we, oh Father God, can represent you, oh God. This evening, I turn over myself to you. As I turn over my companion, I turn over right now, Father God, Reverend Tony, I turn over to you right now in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks, Lord, and I give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah. We just want to give God the thanks, give him the praise. Thank you, Sister Monica. Brethren, I want you to realize there is something that is happening here. You are getting spiritual food. Ah, hallelujah. You're, you're getting nourished. There, there is a, there are, there's an aspect that's happening here. You see, you may have had your Friday evening tea. You may have had your Friday evening dinner. But right now you're getting some spiritual food that will enable you to be strengthened for the days ahead. Because, yes, there are going to be some challenges. But if you hold on to the true living word, you will make it through. I am prophesying that there is somebody right now that needs to change their diet. <laughs> There's somebody that needs to change their diet, that get anchoring to the real good food. You know that good food? You know, like when you eat some food and you stand up and walk two distances, the food, the strength, you don't even feel like you've eaten. I'm talking about the food that when you eat it, you have to sleep it in because it's that rich, it's that healthy. You see, well, there's a difference between an understanding. And before I pray, there's some facts that we need to unpack and need to get into it because when we pray, we must pray with understanding. You're not supposed to dilute the word. If the word, the Bible says that it is clear that in the Bible, it says in Proverbs that too much honey will make you sick. It means that you eat a little at a time, allow for it to digest and for it to benefit the body. You don't go and you dilute it and water it down to suit purposes because you're trying to consume it too quickly. No, there is a reality in terms of what you need to look at. You see, Pastor spoke about the, the aspect of homosexuality in terms of the gateway into the Manchester. God is not against homosexuals. He loves them like he loves any sinner. Is against the acts of the practice. It's not against the people of the practice. I want you to get that understood. It's against the acts of the practice and not the people of the practice. So let this get into context. If you lie, if you steal, if you cheat, it's still a sin. There's no big sin and no little sin. So let's just get, don't get this out of frame, out of mind. Let's just get this in the truth. Let's speak the truth and the truth shall liberate you. I want another thing to understand. And one time Manchester had the title of Gunchester, but that was a gate that had to be shut. We prayed, it changed. 
And now I'm speaking, declaring, we will export Christianity from the UK. We will export Christianity from Manchester. This will be Godchester. I speak it into being, oh God Almighty. There has to be a change. And that is with you and I. Because as I'm going through this, I'm going to challenge you. You see, when we come on this, when I pray, and when we come on when I preach, you're going to be empowered, enlightened, and encouraged. I want you to take that on board, empowered, enlightened, and encouraged, because that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. He counsels you. I am just a vessel. It's not I. It's he that lives within me. And I want you to understand there's some things that we need to look at. This is a reality check. And I want to read a scripture because this scripture is pertinent, pertinent to the time that we're living in. Timothy was speaking and he said in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, for the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, keep up for themselves teachers having itchy ears. Remember, we talk about the gates. Oh, God Almighty, I'm on, I'm on something here. Itch it is, and they shall turn their ears from the truth, and they shall be led and turned onto fables. My God, there needs to be a recalibration. Some people are moving away from the truth for itch your ear. You know that gate that we were talking about needs to be addressed. Do you know that it's scientifically proved that people that have children, fathers speak, mothers speak to that child whilst it's in the womb. That child recognizes the voice before it sees the parent. My God, I'm speaking to somebody. He hears the voice. And I'm saying that somebody who was here to hear. They also say that the last point of when somebody's dying is their hearing. They speak even when you go and you do the last ministering, the last rites. They speak, they, you speak to them. You don't know if they can if they can see you. They don't know if they can reach out and touch. But they're speaking, believing that they can hear. Who was here to hear? The Bible says clearly, oh gosh. And somebody following me, somebody hearing what I'm saying here today. I'm talking to somebody. The Bible says clearly, move away from drinking milk and start to eat solid food. Discipling in terms of the gates. The gates means that as growth as well as knowing the truth. You feed on the word, it brings growth. You must feed and leave. Some of you are nine years into this, three years into this. Four years, 30 years. If you're just drinking milk at that set point, something is wrong. It gives you persistence when you start to eat food. Some of you are not ready for this. The Bible says it clearly. It says, Jesus says, I want to talk to you on a level. But it says that you're not ready for this because the food is too hard. Because what? You've not developed the capacity to chew. And chewing means meditating. It says, my word is a lamp unto my path and a word. Lamp onto my feet. It's a direction. It's direction. Some of you are lost. Why? Because you've not been using the lamp, the word that brings you into the place that puts you back on track. Some of you right now have not been using the light. You're walking around and bumping into things, that seems, and you're feeling out to what you think it is. But if you hung up the light, it's not what you think it is. You need the light. And that is the living God. I'm speaking to somebody here now. Oh, God Almighty. I, I, I was out and I was seeing people wearing masks, masks over their mouth. Do you know that somebody who is deaf can't lip read? It, this is where the enemy is coming in. He's trying to mask the church. You can't go into church and to sing. Yet you can be in the bars spilling over each other when you get drunk. Social distance, when you inebriate, it goes out of the window, yet they permit that. But you can't go into the church and sing praises, sing and bring the truth of worship unto the living God. We have to move away from this. That's why coming online, somebody says it was a good thing because I'm reading my word more. I'm meditating more. I'm seeing what really matters more. I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. This has to change. We need to move to a place where we start to look at the reality in terms of the truth. Our God Almighty, I trust in the God Almighty who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask or think. Set yourself back onto the old path. Speak in the truth in season and out of season. Yeah, God Almighty, it's a pertinent thing that it's not about what is fable, what is right in terms of what you think is right in the sense of whereby it sounds good. 
Ah, oh, God Almighty, no, it has to be truth in season and out of season. The word of God, it goes through spring, summer, autumn, winter. It remains the same. The thread runs through the same. It's truth wherever you go. It regardless of what you're facing, sickness or in health, rich or poor, black and white, up and down. The truth is the truth. Somebody said it to me like this, and I sat and then meditated. Ah, oh, God Almighty, hear me and follow me, somebody. Somebody spoke about having the glass half in a half position, whether it be half empty or half full. And I sat and I thought about it. I'm meditating about it. And I said, it matters not to me just as long as I have a glass, because at some stage it has to be half full or it has to be full up to the top. Sometimes it has to be empty. But as long as I follow the living God as a vessel, he will pour the living water in. Oh God, I'm speaking to somebody and he will fill me up. And that truth shall flow over. It shall cause for a bubbling over. And when it bubbles over, it shall be a reservoir of hope for the person that is lost. Ah, uh, is somebody hearing me? Is somebody following me right now? I'm speaking to somebody. I know God is ministering because he's in control. I know that he's moving because he's in control. Come on, saints. We need to speak the truth. Live the truth. Black is black, white is white. Don't mix up the colors and try and talk about shades of gray and mix it up. There's no fudging in this thing. You have to live the truth. The truth is a liberating thing. It will free you from the darkness. My God, I'm speaking to somebody. Father, I thank you. As I pray right now, I pray that this word there, Father, it has a potent impact in the name of Jesus. It causes like the x-ray. You know, when you go in, to the scan and they, they can't see on the outside what's going on but they have to do an x-ray and it goes with an x-ray light it goes beyond the flesh it goes into the internal arc and it can see what's going on let there be an x-ray that people see where there's any blockages where there's any issues where there's any challenges in their life i speak that they yes they shall not be frightened of the x-ray this will not cause radiation poisoning this will not cause for you have to, to take off your jewelry and take off your watches and such off. You can go in there as you are. God will show you where there's defective places. The word of God that will stand you in truth. It will ground you. Ah, oh God Almighty, I'm speaking to somebody. Let you be like the palm tree. You know why I talk about the palm tree? Do you know the palm tree that when winds go, it can bend? Ah, uh, because what? Even when the winds come, it can bend to the situation. I speak to somebody now, bend your mind to the situation. When you stand in the word of God, it will cause for you to bend your mind to the situation that you will get through. Many people are that dry. Do you know the palm tree is very supple and it's very wet with inside. There's some trees that they break off because they're dry. And when the wind comes and blows because they're dry, they snap off and they blow away and they cause damage. My God, some of us are that dry that when we wind hits us, challenges hits us, we blow away and cause damages in other people's life. I speak that if you come back to the old gate, oh God Almighty, you stand upon the truth of the living God. You come into that place that you allow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who traveled this way before us will allow for you not to falter not to fail. Yes, you will make mistakes because we are human. But my God, I speak that even in your mistakes, that when you come back to the old gate, there is a place because you are allowed to come in. I said before, the gate allowed you to go in and to go out. It will allow you to go in because the gate is open. It's open and it's open for a season. Why do I say that? There will come a time when you cannot go back to that gate because the Holy Spirit is right now the Antichrist spirit that you spoke about right now, we know that the Holy Spirit is holding back, that there is not major calamities because if the Holy Spirit, the Bible said, was not here, we would be in problems. So let's give God thanks that even if those that are not Christians, you are being saved by the Holy Spirit being here. Whether you appreciate yes or no, if the Holy Spirit wasn't here, you would know about it. Give God thanks that God is holding back his wrath. He's causing for the Antichrist not to rule in the way that he wants to. But I'm saying to you that the opportunity to seek the old path, to find the gate, is there for each and every one. Whether you be black, white, yellow or brown, it doesn't matter what 
creed or culture you come from, the key is there. The truth is a liberator. It's for all who would choose to follow. It's for all who would choose to enter. My God, I'm speaking to somebody right now. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are, but I'm knowing that the God who we call upon is able. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. My God, the God that is able, your God, the God who is substantial enough that he's able to be everywhere at one time, but still lead you into the gate that will cause for protection. Right? It will cause for you to be protected because that gate is a place of security. It's a gate that keeps you, as it says, in the cleft of the rock. Under the wings of the of the shadow of the Almighty, my God is able. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. And I want to say to somebody today: enter into that gate. Follow Him. I'm trusting Him. I'm believing in Him. And I believe for you. I am believing that somebody who was one time was following Him, somebody who turned their back on Him. God says, "Turn round, and I'm here to welcome you." Like the prodigal son, the father was looking out. My God, the father was looking out even when he went to destroy himself in sin. And he decided, and I'm speaking to somebody, that they come to themselves. They come from the slop. They come from the ruins. They may have spent their inheritance. But God Almighty says, come back and I will receive you with love because I am truth, the Holy Spirit say. I am truth and I will receive you back. I will welcome you back. I will embrace you back. Come back, come back on the trap that is beaten, the trap that will lead. It may be narrow, but God and you can walk this path. You are able. It may be challenging. Yes, but God is able. Don't think you can do it on your own. You need the truth. You need the truth. Don't be the sidetracks with lies, with each ear preaching, with things that seem right. Test it. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, Test all things, my God. There are some preachers who get offended when you said, I will go home and test it. I have no problem because if it's not the word of God and if I'm off, if I'm off beaten track, if I'm offline, I prefer for you to come and tell me and let's examine it and let's look at it. Let's look at what the word of God says, not the word according to Tony. I feel I've got so much word in me right now, I could start a dictionary. Hold Holy Spirit, right now I'm praying that you will move and touch the hearts of those that are looking for something. They're looking and needing something. They need you, oh God. They may not think they need you, but my God, I pray that the scales be taken away from their eyes, the harness from their hearts. Let the truth penetrate. Let it go past the barrier of resistance. My God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that their movement shall be such potent. Their Father, it shall cause a cascading in, 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 in testing when they find a generic disorder that they know that they think they do this thing called cascade testing. They may find a defectiveness in your gene, in your body, and then they call for the rest of the family and they test them to find out if they have that problem. I'm saying that you will not have a defective gene. I'm saying that when you find the truth, it will be a cascading revelation of impacts, of immunization for you against the lies of the world. I speak right now and see why some of us are so confused with the government system because they told us lies. It wasn't truth. That's why they have a problem in bringing people back in order because they deceived, they manipulated, they told us one thing, they went down another route. They tried to implement one thing and yet the testing that they have, my God, they're talking about an antidote to this situation. Yet they've had things like rubella and other things that they've had for years and not been able to find the right antidote in the right way. But my God, they're saying that they can find it in a few weeks or a few months. My God, I'm saying that right now, some of us need to sit down and take communion. Take communion and, immune, and, and then build up your immune system. Stand upon the truth. Let the word of God liberate you. Some of us need to sit down and allow the word of God, his truth, his word, to impart within us that will cause us to stand. And when sickness comes, when coronavirus, I'm not saying not to observe the regulations. I'm not saying not to wear your mask. I'm saying to stand and to go with the confidence of the living God. When you go out there, 
The atmosphere will change because of you, because you have prayed, because where you live, because you have prayed, there is a change in the atmosphere. Because of where you go in your workplace, because you have prayed, there is a change, because the truth is in you. The enemy cannot stand the truth. He cannot stand against the truth. He will come with part truth. It will sound very good to the ear, but when you check it out at its root, it's not truth because he is the father of lies. My God, that is his title. That is one of his characteristics. Even if he tried, he couldn't tell the whole truth. It's not in his nature because he lied and deceived and manipulated. And he tried to start with a rebellion. He was a rebellious person. Please, I pray that you do not rebel against the truth, the living truth, the liberating truth, the word of God. And as I'm coming right now to the point in which we do the changeover to pastor, I'm asking that you stand upon the truth. When the winds come and rock you, stand upon the truth. It says when you've done all to stand, you stand, Ephesians. Oh, God Almighty, we look and we look and we stand. When the wind, when the wind comes, you stand. When the rain comes, you stand. When the sun comes, you stand. Whatever your situation, stand upon the truth. You cannot go wrong. My God, as I hand over to Pastor, I pray that you take this in meditate upon it even if it be one aspect of this that any of us have prayed meditate upon it allow the holy spirit to marinate it strengthen you in the time and the season that we're going through as i come to you i give you thanks and praise father god almighty for what you're doing in the in the saints right now in jesus name i pray amen and amen 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 thank you minister tony thank you minister monica we thank God for um, what he is doing, how he is leading us um, in this topic of the old gate. And I just want to, I want you to help me to pray that the gates of hell, according to Matthew 16, the gates of hell will not prevail. So you have to understand that while we are still praying in this way, Satan is scheming in his way. But we're declaring today that the gates of hell will not prevail. And what could those gates be? Like I said, it can be schemes. It can be the busyness of your time. It can be um, things going on in your family. It can be distractions. It can be um, the lethargicness that you find yourself um, going through and, 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 and living in, um, you know, demonstrating that lethargicness. And every time you go to get into the word, you're just feeling so heavy. Uh, but we pray that the gates of hell will not prevail. Now, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the word of God, cannot get avail um, prevail against and the people of God, but they are there. And if you live life as if they're not there, you will be deceiving yourself and you'll find yourself in more immobilized. You, uh, but right now we acknowledge that they are there. We acknowledge that there are the schemes of the evil one. We acknowledge that he's a wicked foe. We acknowledge that he does not have our best interest at heart. We acknowledge that the world is swayed by the evil one. But today we're declaring that the purposes of God shall prevail uh, and that we shall go from strength to strength. We are also praying, according to Psalms 118 and 19, that the gates of righteousness will be opened unto us and that we will enter them. Come on, you need to pray this. Pray that the gate of righteousness will be opened and we will walk into it. Hallelujah. Now listen, this, this can, might sound like an oxymoron because you, you and I are made righteous in Christ. We are made righteous, but it's not always easy to demonstrate it. It's not always easy to walk in it because you are com you are you are um, bombarded by with so many different things. But today I'm declaring that even in those tricky situations, those situations where you have to navigate your 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 conduct 
very well. It's like you're walking through treacle or walking on eggshells. The, the Lord himself is going to open up for you a gate of righteousness that you will find wisdom how to navigate through every situation. You'll find wisdom when when your boss is opposing you, when your, your husband or wife is opposing you, your children are opposing you. May God give you wisdom. May God teach you how to scale the wall. May God teach you how to be in that situation in the mighty name of Jesus. And let every bar of brass be cut to sunder. Let every bar of brass be broken over us. Because we are now opening the gates of the Lord. The gates of righteousness, but also the old gate. Hallelujah. Now this is the time in our prayer where we want to give you the opportunity to send in your prayer requests. We want to hear from you. We want to trust God and believe God that um, whatever you are, you are in need of, that God is the great supplier. Uh, and whatever you need of the Lord that he's willing to give. Uh, I, 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 and that's not a magic wand. That's not just a, a blank statement. I'm telling you, God wants to give you good things. Um, you know, he says, if you have a father um, who knows how to give your, your child a good thing, why would you think that your, your heavenly father would not do that and more, you know? And so I want you to send in your prayer request so that we can believe God with you. Uh, we want to pray with you. Um, I'm mindful of those who are on the um, Facebook link. If you have a prayer request, please send them in. We've got 15 more minutes. We want to give this time to interceding with you. Um, I want to pray for Charmaine, Charmaine Sangster. Um, she's gone into, she's had surgery this weekend or the beginning of this week, should I say, and she's now in recovery mode, um, but they're still doing tests. But we're praying right now that there will be an end to every cycle of illness that has been inflicting her body. We're praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus that, Lord, you will deliver her from this infirmity, that you will deliver her, Father, from this illness right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and I thank you for exposing the devil's plan before it was too late. Father, in the name of Jesus, and we're declaring for a good Turn around. We're declaring for a good recovery, Lord God. We're declaring that you add on to her strength. I declare that you add on to her, Lord God, um, joy. Add on to her peace. Add on to her, Lord God. Lord, you be the, the, the medicine that you, she needs. The Bible says that your word is like medicine to our bones. Father, we're praying right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, there was someone on the chat, on the WhatsApp that we were praying for um, earlier. Uh, let me just find that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paula Watson. Uh, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus for Paula Watson. Father, we put her before you this evening. Paula Watson, we're declaring healing over your body. Over this week, we've been hearing healing testimonies um, throughout our on our broadcast healing testimonies on our whatsapp and we're declaring right now that this is a season of healing father will you restore father will you deliver father you will cancel the plans of the enemy over paula watson right now we call her by name father in the mighty name of jesus we're declaring healing over her body right now in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah oh god we thank you we thank you jesus we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. Hallelujah. If you have a prayer request, please keep them coming in. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're praying for those who have um, loved ones who are not saved loved ones who are not saved, Father, will you deliver? Father, will you touch? Well, Father, will you open their eye gate, open their ear gate, open their heart to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be Jesus forever. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Father God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. If there's any more prayer requests, please put them in the chat and we will we will contend with them with you for that breakthrough. Hallelujah. You know, over these um weeks we have had so many um answered prayers during our time of prayer. You know, remember the time when we got the news of that young boy who was shot um six times. Um but we did we, we prayed together and God delivered right there. We we've, we've been praying for breakthrough in different people's lives. Um, um and 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 God has been delivering people as we were going through. You know, there was Basil, we were praying for him and God delivered. You know, God has been faithful. And even if he, you know, sometimes we feel it, that just because we prayed, it goes the way we want. But God knows what's best for us. Sometimes he's saying it's time to come home. But whatever the situation, we put our trust in God. Hallelujah. Um, Minister Tony, I want you to pray. For, um, Sister Veronica um, has said, pray for the healing of Steve, of his heart and lungs. Um, there must be a condition there on his heart and lungs, but we're praying that God will touch him. Minister, Minister Tony, come in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks there, Father, that we can stand vicariously on behalf as intercessors for those there, Father, whose prayer requests will come before. We bring their Father, Steve, before you, and we pray in the name of Jesus there, Father, right now that whatever the problem is, in the name of Jesus there, Father, whether it be a malfunction, whether it be genetic, their father, where it be their father, hereditary, or whether it be their father just through their father, damage their father in life as he's going along. I speak right now to his heart and lungs. I speak in the name of Jesus, their father, that if they're blocked arteries, that they shall be unblocked right now. I speak in the name of Jesus, their father, if there's anything their father that is closed or clogged, that it be open. I speak right now. If it's a place there, Father, that the storeroom of heaven with body parts there, Father, that angels there, Father, will do a transmission. I know of a testimony of a man who was going for a heart problem, had a heart problem, went medically to the doctors and that heart was fully rejuvenated, a totally new heart, a heart even of a person that was younger than himself. This is by surgery. It was a miraculous. So I know that you, oh God, are no respect to a person. I speak right now. Let testimony come forth. You are not a God that is limited to geographical location. As we pray and come in agreement, it's not just me. I am a vocal point, but my God, there is a people behind me that we come in agreement. Steve, I speak right now that every blockage, every damage, anything that is malfunctioning in your body right now, it comes back to the creator border you shall be refreshed you shall know if there's a limitation in your breathing breathlessness i command for you to go if there is a blockage in terms of heart malfunction i speak that you shall pump all around the blood in the body and it shall be effective as you was when you was in your 20s or even earlier than that you shall not have any defect you shall be a, an astonishment to the medical profession. As I speak, let the word go right now and penetrate. It shall meet. As if Peter's shadow can heal as he walked, I believe that the word of God can penetrate and make a change. So I'm praying and believing, Steve, you shall receive a testimony. You shall come forth whether it be gradual because we look at healing in one way but healing can be in two ways there can be a divine impartation where that's automatic touched and gone and received healing but there are those that recover stage by stage whatever choose whatever method the lord chooses i speak it shall come to pass he shall whether it be instantaneous recovery we celebrate that if it be a long journey for it to recover but we celebrate that we trust the whole god because his faith will have to build and he will give credit to not his herbs not in terms of medication not in terms of surgery but he will give credit to the king of kings and the lord of lords today marks a day in the heavens 
We appeal to the courts of heaven that you will receive your healing, Steve. Your family will be astonished. You shall, I speak and feel it in my spirit. Something shall move that shall bring faith as a cascading testimony that there is a true and living God to be served. As I come to you, Father, I give you thanks and praise as I celebrate and applaud right now. Come on, saints, applaud right now. We thank the King of kings and the Lord of lords for what he's doing on Steve's behalf. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. And so we're going to pray for Beirut, and I'm going to ask um, Minister Monica to lift up the people from Beirut. Um, this is a time where it's, it's, a, it's a devastation. Um, whatever was the cause of that explosion, um, we've seen livelihoods. The nation itself was in a, a vulnerable state. And now this has happened, um, you know, but we believe in miracles, that God can turn this around for the good of the people and his own will. Minister Monica. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. As I come boldly to the throne of grace, Father God, that you said, when I come, I can receive grace and mercy. Father, I come with the city of Beirut, Father God, hallelujah. You know the destruction that has gone on there in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Human error in the name of Jesus. And I pray for your forgiveness for those, oh, Father God, who have been so slack in their doing in the name of Jesus. That has caused so many lives in the name of Jesus. So much destruction in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But Lord, I know that you're a miracle working God. I know that the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. And Father God, you can go, put strength and, and, to, and courage into the lives and, and minds and hearts of those people, Lord, as they try to rebuild their lives. Oh, Father God, those who, Lord, that have passed and lost and lost loved ones, I pray that you will comfort them father god i pray for those who are sick oh god those who have been in accidentally oh hallelujah been maimed in the name of jesus i pray father god that you lord oh hallelujah father god will restore strength will restore vigor will restore wholeness to their bodies to their hearts and to their minds strength to their hearts strength to their spirits oh father god hallelujah father god because man is a failure man will always fail but you will never fail so, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I lift up their root before you, I pray, Father God, that, hallelujah, those of the rest of the world, oh, Father God, will send aid, will send help in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Father, that they will be help those people who need help. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up their root before you once again in the name of Jesus. Do your work, Lord, because the, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Touch hearts. Touch minds, oh hallelujah, God, and forgive those who have been so slack in their doing. In the name of Jesus, I pray, in no other name but Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we cover those in Beirut. We cover those who are without homes, those who are without livelihoods, and those who've lost loved ones. Um, you know, and we, we as especially as Christians, we need to learn to, to be joyful with those who are joyful, to mourn with those who are mourning. So today we lift them up in, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We're also, um, as we're coming to an end of this broadcast this evening, I really want to continue to thank you for journeying with us. Um, you know, life is starting to bubble again. Many people are, are busy and um, to and fro in. And the lockdown is up, the lockdown is down. So many different things to, to navigate. Um, what does life look like after um, this, this lockdown? Um, but regardless of what, um, we are going to be faithful. Um, each week we're going to be here by God's grace. Um, and we're going to continue to pray. I want to just encourage you while we're coming to the end of this to like the broadcast. Please press the like button. If you've not yet subscribed, please subscribe. Um, if you don't, you're not shared it, you still can share it. Even if we go off um, off the broadcast, that it's still active. Um, so you can you can share this near and far. Um, we are not just praying for ourselves; we're praying for our city, our nation, people around the world. Um, and even if we wasn't doing that, we were just praying for the points that we just prayed today. 
there's people who need to hear and to engage with God in a personal way. So share it, like it, subscribe. Please do that. Again, we, we have our Sunday services at 11 a.m. Um, and you, you don't want to miss this um, week. Um, we have an action-packed week. Um, please um, join us. Um, and follow our ministry. You can go on our website, restorationhousefirstwood.org, and you can find us on there. We also have launched our virtual funeral um, service, which is called Cara Production, C H A R A Production. Um, you can get that on the website. Um, if you if you know of any person who needs that support and that service, we can provide that and and have a platform where people around the world can engage together in the time of difficulty um, to celebrate the lives of loved ones. So again, thank you for your journey with us. Thank you for being consistent. And I want to say to you, good night and God bless.